Hi, and welcome to Christ Studios Christ Talk. We have one of the leading ladies in the gospel, in the kingdom right now. And she's here with us to share her story of faith and of purpose and as she moves into her calling. Welcome, Patricia Moore. Hello. Hi, Patricia. So glad to have you. Thank you for having me. I truly appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wanted to share now in the kingdom, we're going into a new year. Um, so many things are getting ready to happen. And I, I just know that your story will help women out there, um, not only as a woman um, and a mother, but also your ministry. I know that you're transitioning into your ministry. So can we can you share a little bit? Can we go into that story that you have, that powerful story about your life? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning because I was raised in a single parent home mm -hmm. um, just with my mother, some strong women around me. She has 10 siblings. Oh, wow. And all of them were like go getters, very big on education, very big on just uh, self independence, yes. <laughs> if you will. And so I actually have a degree in accounting, went to school for accounting. Yes. I was an auditor. And I really thought that I was going to be this bad businesswoman in corporate America. <laughs> like my whole plan for my life is so different mm -hmm. than where it is now. And that just goes to show there's a scripture that says we make the plans, but God plans the way. Yes. yes. We'll snatch you up and say, that was cute what you <laughs> did, but I created you and I have a calling for your life. Yeah. And so I have discovered so many different things about me just because of like some of the setbacks and hurdles and challenges that I had to go through in life where I actually had to stop mm -hmm. and realize that a lot of things that I did from going to school, college and a career, even unto marriage, that I had these plans and ideas. And I didn't stop and say, hey, God, is this what you want for me? Yes. Is this what you created me to do? I kind of went along with what I saw around me. I didn't see entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I had one uncle who was in the ministry and it seemed like something that was really tough. And it was something I said I never wanted to do. I never wanted to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And even like watching some of the other people in my church, ministry wasn't something that I ever wanted to do. And so then fast forward. I also didn't know if I was going to be married. It wasn't at one point I wanted to get married, but then I shied away from it just because of failed relationships and just not meeting the right person. So I started to singularly focus on my career mm -hmm. and my relationship with God because I had just um, went to started a new church and I just dove right into my yes. church. Mm -hmm. And so upon, you know, fast forward, I'm like, I'll do me. I'm independent. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then I meet, um, I meet someone. Mm -hmm. and we get married, and he's actually um, at the time not in ministry, but he was into entertainment. Mm -hmm. Totally something. He was an entrepreneur, risk taker, all the things that scared the mess out of me. Right? Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Because I'm so conservative. I'm an introvert. Like I like to be behind the scenes. I like to help people. But not to be out there, like a lot of the, the, the things he would do, I'm just like, whoa, wh how does that make sense? A plus B, <laughs> you know, how does, what, how are you doing this? You know, like, it just scared me because my yeah. brain thinks like, you have to look at the risk. You have, like, everything has to flow together. I did not really leave room for God. Uh -huh. I believed in God. But I didn't trust God the way that I trust him now. And I've learned so much now. I was so immature back then. But the <laughs> way I know God now, mm -hmm. he ended up becoming a minister. And when he mm -hmm. came to me and told me, I've been calling this ministry, I was like, he was like, please don't be mad. And I'm like, <laughs> everything that I, I never wanted to do became something I had to do. Never wanted to do ministry. Guess what? Yeah, in ministry, never wanted to be out in front. Now I'm out in front, like mm -hmm. never say never because right. we make the plans, but God plans the way. And you have to know that we were created by God and he did not send us here just to mm -hmm. write our own plans in our own life. Yes. Yeah. Like, I heard this 
preacher say, there's a problem in the earth and God created you to solve a problem, to be a part of advancing his family, mm -hmm. to be a disciple. So it's less about you coming to earth, going to school, get a job. And not to say that's bad, but while you're doing that, you have to seek, well, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Am I advancing the kingdom? Am I doing ministry? Because yeah. we all are called to do ministry, regardless if you like it or not. Yes. We are called to be disciples wherever that lands us. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had to come to that recollection that there is a calling on my life. And it wasn't, yeah. until, you know, everything that I went through in my marriage, I thought I was just there assigned to serve, assigned to support that mission. But God was actually allowing me to see and train me because one day he was going to set me apart. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that because I was so resilient against ministry and doing that. I would help, mm -hmm. but it's not something that I desired to do mm -hmm. until fast forward transitioning. Now we're separated and going through that process, you know, you find yourself by yourself. And because of my early foundation of being introduced to Christ by my family, diving into my church. I only had God at that moment. You know, of course, mm -hmm. I had accountability partners, great accountability partners. I had my family, I had spiritual leaders. I did counseling. But out of all of that, the one thing that they told me, keep your eyes on God. Every last person was like, we're not going to focus on the circumstance. We're not going to focus on the situation. They would not allow me to stay. They would let me vent. That would allow me to have my moments of what I felt, but that would always bring me back. You need to focus on God. They would always bring me back to God. And I would say, okay. So I would find myself deep, deep in his word, deep in my closet, crying out, uh, praying and seeking him. And the more I would seek him, the more he would reveal to me. Then the more he would reveal to me, the more I would want to share because I'm that type of person. Mm -hmm. If I learn something new, I'm like, oh, I got to share this. I got to share this. Mm -hmm. I started sharing my journey online, on Instagram, on Facebook. That opened up a floodgate of women who came into my DMs, people that I don't even know, mm -hmm. sharing personal stuff with me. And a lot of it grieved my spirit because although they were going through the same thing I went through, mm -hmm. it seemed like they were afraid. They felt embarrassed. Somehow guilt had set in. They did not know how to move forward. They okay. they loved God. They trusted God. But it was like, is God word really going to work for me? How could he allow this to happen? I don't know what's next. I don't know how to let go of my plans, of my expectations, of my dreams that I had for my situation. I don't know how to move past this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so yes. out of that, was developed my tea time, which I do week to week. And I call mm -hmm. it tea time because most of the times people are like, I'm spilling my tea. Well, uh -huh. this is my testimony. This is my tea, but I'm not being messy. It's not gossip, but I'm spreading the good news. Yes. Yes. Because I realized, like I said, when we're created, there was a problem. Mm -hmm. so unfortunately, like I said, I was too much control, resilient. God gave me my lot. You know, it says whatever my lot, I have to accept and it says all, all is well. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to accept that lot because I didn't want to be in a broken relationship. I was raised in a broken relationship. All mm -hmm. I wanted was something different for myself and my children, something I never had. Mm -hmm. And here I find myself and I was like, man, God, that was the one thing I prayed on. And now I find myself here. Like mm -hmm. the same thing I went through as a child, I'm going through as an adult. But like I said, because I read so many women's story, okay, God, I'll be obedient. I, I learned so much. I'll be obedient. Whatever you need me to do. If yeah. I got to help these women, I thought my serving was going to be in corporate America, going in those businesses, looking at their goals and dreams and helping them move forward. But God was like, no, you're going to advance my dreams and goals for you. That's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. and so I would come on week to week and some things that either I was dealing with or they were dealing with. I'm like, let's talk about it because everybody's yeah. not willing to come on in front of a camera 
and talk about the real stuff that we're going through. Yes, yes, that's and, important. And I'm like, I'm not exempt. Look, so let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Following Christ may seem like it's not achievable because he was perfect. He came without sin. That's right. Because we don't see a tangible God, some people don't really believe the things that God can do. Right. So it's harder for them. I, yeah, I'm reading the word, but really applying it, sitting, having to sit and wait. Mm. That's tough for some people. And I had to say, I get it. But let me tell you what God did in my life when I went yes. to him and I was vulnerable and I gave him everything. And he surrounded me with people that apparently saw the gift in me. Like that was the most blessed thing. He moved everybody out of my atmosphere. That was a distraction that mm -hmm. I didn't eat around me. And he brought everybody in me that just pushed and poured yes. and pushed. And even still to this day, encouraging and pushing like, no, you got to do this. You have to do this. And so. I just kept going. Everything that I learned, whether it was from fitness, whether it was from doing makeup, to me, makeup was a ministry. I would get in front of these brides and I would find myself just talking about God, what marriage covenant means. Like, don't worry about all the details of the, the, the wedding. Don't stress yourself out. Yeah. You need to focus on the union, the, the assignment God is giving you for your marriage. Like, Every mm -hmm. gift that God gave me, I would find myself somehow bringing it back to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and I just started sharing it, like I said, week to week, whether it was my story or their story. But I was like, we can't be bound by guilt. We can't be bound by embarrassment. That's what the enemy want to do. And whatever my problem was that I didn't want, like I mm -hmm. didn't want this. We have a cross to bear. I didn't want this cross. I didn't want ministry but it's necessary and nothing else in this world matters to me. If I don't do what God asked me to do, it don't matter how great I was in school. It does not matter how great I was at my job. He's like, that's fine. And Danny, but is that what I asked you to do? Yes. Yes. And as you say that I hear, you know, you were talking about your life before and we know that we know Patricia in the kingdom we know, you know, Patricia, you were married. If it's okay for me to say to Willie Moore Jr. Mm -hmm. And now you're moving forward into your ministry. Um, and we want people to know that your ministry of, you know, just the, the wife and now talk speaking to women more so now woman to woman. Um, you're now letting them know about their purpose mm -hmm. and how now you have evolved to the next dimension um, in your life. You know, and sometimes when we're waiting I, as a woman, I know that you, we have a lot of strength, a lot of strength that people don't see and, and waiting takes strength, you know, mm -hmm. um, not being in the spotlight <laughs> takes a lot of, of strength and you got to know who you are. Yeah. And so I want to talk about now that, you know, that dimension in your life um, of that transition you've, you know, you, you were saying you thought God had the corporate life for you and now it is something totally new. So now the ministry, where, where do you feel like God is leading you in your purpose at the, in this season? Um, in this season, like I said, I really feel like one is unconventional. It is yeah. not something um, I would say normal because what, and I say that because growing up, um, there was a lot of things that I wish would have been shared with me. Mm -hmm. So I could have known like, Hey, at least you could have told me about this. <laughs> but like I said, looking back and learning now and talking to some of the wives, yes, they were too afraid to speak. You don't talk about that. You take everything to God in prayer. You, whatever mm -hmm. stays, you know, in the house, whatever happens in the house stays in the house. And I'm not saying that you had to, like I said, gossip and share your business. Wow. What I am saying is that we are powerful through our testimony. Mm -hmm. And there were there are a lot of testimonies that are taken to the grave. Yes. There are a lot of women who don't get that education and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate even the men now being vulnerable, mm -hmm. coming out with their podcast, trying to give tools and nuggets to other men to help our culture, to help families to thrive. Yes. And I just felt like there's information that we're still not willing to talk about. And God is like, she got a big enough mouth. 
that she's not going to be afraid and she's going to talk about this stuff. Like, I'm not for the watered down religion. I'm not for the sugar coating. None of my accountability partners and counselors, when I tell you they shoot it to me so straight, mm -hmm. but I can take it. But they don't water it down for me and they shoot it to me straight. And I'm like, oh, this is good. Why isn't anybody talking about this? Mm -hmm. You know, we always want to talk about the hallelujahs, the, the blessings, the promise that God, we want to stay in the, the joyful moments, but we don't talk about really what happens in the struggle. Yes. The and process. The struggle. That's where the people fall off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, so, God, and I think that that is, I have to stay right there because it's like God is, is leading us because we're, we can say that because we're not being led by the world. Right. We are being led by the spirit for such a time as this. Right. And I, 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 in the marriage, God is saying, you know, the fall off is where he's at. You mm -hmm. know, um, it's the it's when the enemy tries to come in and destroy what he's purpose. And so what do, what do you say to, to someone today? And, and, and maybe, you know, we can share it together, um, you know, about keeping it in, in the fall off, you know. Um, that, and, and that is what God is saying. I, I don't know. I can't tell you everything cause I, I don't know, but I know that when God is saying, you just express that. And he said, stay right there, stay right there. That's where he is right there in the fall off. What do you feel that God is saying in that? Cause that's what you expressed. I think we have to, when we can get past and surrender yes. our plans, our strong will, yeah. The embarrassment, our ideas, when we can be open enough to go to God and say, God, I'm mad at you because yeah. this is what I wanted to happen in my life. Amen. Even for me, I thought that if I did the right thing, if I follow God's word, I would be protected and I wouldn't have to go through anything bad. Mm -hmm. How immature of me when I read the Bible back in my 20s that I thought I could escape troubles, that I could escape. But yeah. why did I think that? Like, why did I feel like just being righteous or just doing the right thing, I was going to miss mm -hmm. all the suffering, the jobs, the all the people. I was like, well, they did something wrong. That's why they received what they received. Mm -hmm. That is furthest from the truth. Yeah. I was telling my mom the other day, I said, I realized when God said, in your weakness, I am made strong. That means that strength comes through our weakness. It's inevitable mm -hmm. because human nature, if we're doing good, if we're comfortable, if everything is right, we're not leaning and depending on God. Yes. I wish we could make God our everything when things are going right. But naturally mm -hmm. he knew us. He knew our sin nature. And he's like, I just talked about Joe. Joe was doing good. He couldn't mm -hmm. understand why God came in and allowed the devil to, um, Test yeah. But yeah. what Job got from that, what I got from Job was that he got a different relationship. He even had to repent because the guy he thought he knew when he was doing good, mm -hmm. he knew him totally different. Yes. And so in the fallout, I admonish people to just look for God and surrender and understand that's when you get your purpose. That's when God speaks. Mm -hmm. That's when you get your strength. It hurts. We don't talk about the hurt, but that's when you have to lean on other believers who have been there, who know about it, who are willing not to be embarrassed to give their testimony and say, this is what I went through. I had to scream at God. I had to yell at God. I had to be honest that I was mad at God, that I was disappointed, but I was only disappointed because I wanted things my way. Mm -hmm. I never included God to ask him his way. If from the very inception, when you were born in this world, if somebody was sat down to you and said, this is the world's way of doing stuff, but this is God's way. I want to show you the word of God, walk you through that, and then you apply that in the world. I think we would have been a little bit less disappointed. Mm -hmm. We would have had less expectations and hopes and what we could do, and we would have naturally been able to receive what God was doing, but it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. so when we go through those circumstances, you got to realize God, what they say on the potter's wheel, he has yes. to take out the impurities. You learn the world's way. Mm -hmm. And God is like, I can't have that mentality. You want me to bless you. You want me to increase your territory. I know you see other people out here with platforms and all that other stuff. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. However, I have to get that mentality out of you. I have to get you to see me. I have to get you to depend on me to know that I, I am the creator. I control this world. I have a purpose for you. I just told my son this morning going to school, I said, two times in the Bible, it said, the ruler of this world, talking about Satan. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if I come into your house and I'm bragging on somebody else's mm -hmm. house, and talking about somebody's house, and I'm in your house? You would feel so disrespected. You'll be so mad enough, probably ready to fight or kick me out. Mm -hmm. That's why we go through trials and tribulations, because we have the nerve to be in his domain. Right. Praising God, worshiping God, trying to talk about and brag about a God. And he's like, no, I'm the ruler of this world. Mm -hmm. I control this. No, you really don't. You only can do what God allows. And yeah. when God allows us to go through those trials and tribulations, apparently God is trying to get our attention. And instead of fighting it, be honest. Like, be, I have to be so honest about what I felt going through my transition. And I try to be so honest when I get online and I do my tea time because mm -hmm. I realize the hardest part to get over is the fall and it's because of our expectations, what we won't surrender, what we won't allow God to take control, what we won't allow God to do in us. The Israelites were in mm -hmm. the wilderness longer than they had to be because God said, I'm not moving you. You was only supposed to be here 11 days, but you were here longer. And a lot of you died because you just would not accept the fall. And you didn't realize I had a better purpose for you, but it required you to know who I am. And that's what Job has to do. God, forgive me. I really thought I knew you, but I don't. Gotcha. And I hear I hear you in that in this season and, and this season through your transition. I know you stated you've gone through transitions and I hear that, that ministry coming out. <laughs> I hear that ministry coming out. And, and, and I, I, I do love that. I, I hear God, he is, he is healing you. He is working on you and he's also helping to heal other women, you know, and I, I know, I know you've expressed that women have came to you and and you know, connected with you, and even shared things that they needed to share. In this season, do you feel like a lot of women are needing that that type of not girlfriend, but are they needing their their connecting person from the kingdom? Are they needing, I guess, God to reach out to them? Do you feel that God is using you to reach out to other women um, to get into their purpose? I I absolutely do because, like I said, for perfect strangers to feel so comfortable. And when I tell you like one person's story may be like, and they're like, I apologize. I just kind of, you know, I mean the story and I'm sitting there like, my God. And then I'm like, well, God, what would you have me to say to them? What would you have me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just be as transparent as you can. Like yes. I don't have to give all my details, mm -hmm. but I, I've learned how to empathize. That's something again, before going through this process, you might have come to me with a problem and although I want to help you, I might not have been able to help you in the way that you need it because I couldn't empathize. I mm -hmm. couldn't empathize. I was too busy like, well, I'm doing what God asked me to do. I, you know, he broke all of that off of me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm able to empathize with these women. They feel comfortable. They feel like they have a sister. And yes. that's all God wanted. He's yes. like, in the body, if the right arm is hurting, the left arm should feel it. We're supposed to be able to come together, lift each other up. Like I said, mm -hmm. not feel about guilt and an embarrassment. But he was like, that's why I created a body, because that's what we're supposed to do. But so many people keep their stories to themselves. Mm -hmm. they're, they keep their testimony to themselves. And there is a huge hole for women because they're seeking. They want it. They want to see God. God is not here in physical form. But he's like, through you, you are a representation of me. That's why you mm -hmm. have to heal. That's why you have to forgive. That's why you have to learn how to love. That's yes. why you have to surrender because you have to do it. Since I'm not here, you have to represent me. Yes. That's the only way this is going to happen and we get to eternity, we have to share with each other. Yes. And so I do feel like 
that is now my purpose mm-hmm. for you to share so that hopefully they get the passion, the desire. And I always tell them, please know as you're going through this or after you're done, God is going to send somebody to you because that's how mm-hmm. he did me. That's how he did the person before me. Like he's going to connect you with somebody because that's how this works. So you got to make it through this because yes. you got to help somebody else. Yes. Amen. And and we have to share that with you today that Patricia Moore is connecting with you. And you can also, those women that are needing that connect, um, She her purpose is here. She's in it. She's flowing in it. And we want to let others know today, you know, you, you can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. Um, others have gone through and are going through, but they're coming out. Mm-hmm. And she has she can help you with those that with that coming out part. You know, sometimes you're looking for that testimony or that story or that person that can show that they are a miracle, that they are out. They are out of they're off that mountain. You know, they're they're coming out of it. They're transitioning. And that's the part that sometimes people need to get to. So I thank you, Patricia, for not only your transition, I thank you for your faith and I thank you for your purpose and now flowing in your ministry. We thank you so much. And we're going to have to have you back because (laughs) you're now flowing in the ministry. You're flowing in your purpose. And I know you have so much more in store. So thank you so much. And how can they connect with you as well? Well, I just want to say thank you. I'm glad God placed me on your heart and allowed me to share. Um, you can find me at patricialmore.com or Mrs. Makeup One, M R S M A K E U P, the number one dot com. Um, I'm, I also have a Facebook. You can um, probably click through Instagram, but it's Patricia Reflections More on Facebook. But everything is linked to my website, patricialmore.com. Thank you so much. And we see your website. Beautiful. We love the ministry. Love your ministry. Thank Thank you, you Patricia Moore, for everything that you've done. Thank you, Patricia, for um, even the things that you've done with your family. We see and we salute you, give you your flowers now for all the things that you have done and all the fruition from your children that you have imparted in them. We bless you. We thank you. And you are valued in the kingdom. Thank you today. And glory to God. God, live well and always have a but God moment. But yes. God, period. It's always yes. going to be impossible to you, but God says it's not impossible for him. Period. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank you again from Christ Studios, Christ Talk. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.